is the notes for section 11.1, Introduction to Polynomials. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you read section 11.1 before continuing on. You should have also filled in uh, the notes here for section 11.1 in terms of vocabulary. If you haven't done so already, you might want to just pause the video and fill that in at this time. But make sure that you're familiar with all that vocabulary. We'll be using it as we go through some of the, the examples that are, are coming up here uh, later on in this video. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at example one here. It says using the polynomial 3x squared plus 6x to the fifth minus 47 minus 8x squared. Part A says list all the coefficients. Part B says what is the degree and the leading coefficient. And then part C is rewrite the polynomial in standard form. I'm actually going to do this in a little different order than the problem is actually set up. I'm going to do part C first, and then we'll come back and we'll do the other two parts. So let's do part C. If I'm going to write that in standard form, if you remember, I'm going to write that in order, go with in descending order based on the exponents on my variables. Well, to do that, I'm going to start out with 6x to the fifth power. And since that's positive, um, we can just write it like that, 6x to the fifth power. Now, the next thing I have these two are both with a degree of 2, and they can be combined. So I'm going to put those together. If I have a 3x squared and a negative 8x squared, if I add those together, I get negative 5x squared. And then finally, that would take care of all three of these have been put in. And then finally, I'm going to put in negative 47. So those would be that that would be written in standard form. We have them in DC, descending order um, based on the powers on the x's. Okay. Now part B it says what is the degree and the leading coefficient. Then part A is list all the coefficients. Well, let's go up and do part A now. Listing all the coefficients. Remember the coefficients are the numbers that come in front of the variable. So I have um, three coefficients then six negative 5 and negative 47. Notice how I brought the negative that comes with that. So these would be my coefficients 6, negative 5, and negative 47. And then finally, what is the degree of the leading coefficient? Excuse me, what are the degree and the leading coefficient? Well, the degree is the highest power of exponents within the entire polynomial. So in this case, the degree is going to be equal to 5. And uh, the leading coefficient is the number that comes in front of that. It's always the number that comes in front of the highest powered exponent. Therefore, the leading coefficient, we'll just abbreviate that to LC, is 6. All right, next in your notes, I have just a chart of uh, different polynomials that, that we'll be encountering that we, we give special names to. After, after that, we can generally, we'll just refer to them as a polynomial. But So a first degree is, is a linear polynomial. Second degree is a quadratic, which we've spent, both of these we've spent quite a bit of time on. And then third, fourth, and fifth are a cubic, quartic, and quintic. And you can notice that we have the general form for each one of those. So if I'm looking at a quintic, there are going to be the coefficients that we have for, for a, a general quintic are a, b, c, d, e, and f. So there are a total of six coefficients for a degree polynomial. In general, whatever the degree of the polynomial is, there will be that number plus one coefficients that would be associated with that um, uh, that particular uh, polynomial. So before going on with number two, you might want to just reread example number two on page 732. Um, and, and I'm just going to go through that one at this time. It says consider the polynomial function p with the equation p of x equals 6x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth plus 4x squared minus 2x minus 1 minus 7, excuse me. What is p of 2? So 
think about back to when we first look at functions. That just means we're going to plug 2 in for x. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So if p of 2 means that we're going to do the following. p of 2 is equal to 6 times 2 to the 5th minus 3 times 2 to the 4th plus 4 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 70. Okay. So on your calculator, you can go ahead and plug that in to find the value of p of 2. So if we plug that into our calculator, you can see <clears throat> that we get p of 2 is equal to 86. So we're going to put that here. So my value of p of 2 then would be 86. Okay. Part B asks us to graph that using the window from negative 3 to 3 and negative 120 uh, to 10. So let's go to our calculator and go ahead and do that now. So we're going to new, add a new window on our graphing calculator and then in, and make sure that we, we graph that is and then make sure that we change the window settings. So go to window settings and then we want to put in those values for x and y. So you can see I have that negative 3 to 3 and then negative 120 to 10 in terms of my x and y values. Then I'm going to hit OK on that. And it will change the, the look of my graph. Now I'm going to enter that function into my calculator. So I'm going to enter it here in, in, in F1 of x and then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to graph that. And then what you'd want to do on yours is just sketch that graph um, for for that function on your on your on your paper there. So this is what you should kind of have sketched on your on your notes then. Okay. Alright, this example number three is the guided example from your book. And I just want to it, it's a good problem and I want to just quickly take a look at it. It says, let f of x equal 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 and g of x is 4x minus 5. Predict a, the degree of f of x times g of x. Okay, well let's look at the solution down here. It says, because the degree of f is 2 and the degree of g is 1, the degree of f of x times g of x. Now think about that. If I'm, if I'm multiplying x if I'm multiplying things and I'm looking at the degree and I'm looking at the exponents, when I multiply, the, the powers on the exponents are being added together. Therefore, I'm going to add the leading, uh, or excuse me, the, the degree of each of those polynomials together to get the degree of the, the product of those two polynomials. Therefore, the, the uh, degree of the, of the new problem the uh, new polynomial f of x times g of x would have to be 3 because it would be 2 plus 1. And then if uh, part b, it's asking for the leading coefficient of the product of those two polynomials. Well, the leading coefficient, you know, if, if you think about it, if you're multiplying them together, the coefficients are being multiplied together. Therefore, the new leading coefficient would be the product of the leading coefficients of each of those polynomials. So the new one would be um, 3 times 4 or 12. So that would be my new leading coefficient. Part C says, because the degree of f is 2 and the degree of g is 1, the degree of f of g of x will be the product of their degrees. So it's going to be 2 times 1, or in this case, 2. Because when, when you're doing the f of g of x, really what you're doing is you're taking the power of a power. So I'm going to put g, g of x in for f of x. So I'm going to take the degree of g of x and raising it to the degree of f of x. So I'm going to be multiplying to get the degree of f of g of x. And then part d says, because the leading coefficient of f is 3 and the leading coefficient of g is 4, the degree and the degree of f is 2, the leading coefficient of f of g of x is equal to, when you think about what's happening there, I'm putting this stuff 
in for x here. So when I'm looking at the leading coefficient, I'm going to take 3 times, well, for the leading, I'm looking at this 4x. So 4x squared. So in terms of the leading coefficient, it's just the number 4 squared. Therefore, 3 times 4 squared is 3 times 16 which is equal to 48. Therefore, the leading coefficient of f of g of x would be 48. Sorry, I think I had that cut off. So it would be 3 times 4 squared, which is 3 times 16, which is 48. So that's what I had written there. So 3 and 4 would be those two, first two blanks, and 48 would be the last blank. <laughs>